Winter is a harsh season not only for drivers, but also for their cars. It results in a 45% reduction in driving range, which is a significant figure that actually makes a lot of people nervous. However, the Tesla Cybertruck is entering the world as a game changer because it is the only pickup truck equipped with a unique heat pump system. We also have the latest and uh, greatest uh, in heat pump, which is the basically the HVAC system for the car. Uh, it's 30% better cold weather range. So how exactly will the heat pump system on the Cybertruck deal with winters? Let's find out in today's episode of Tesla Car World. Welcome back to our channel. Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing if you haven't already and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our exciting videos in the future. Now let's get started with today's content. Although the modern heat pumps that we know of today are considered modern innovations in eco-friendly heating solutions, they've been in existence for a far much longer time than you think. In 1948, Robert C. Weber, an American inventor, came up with the idea of a ground source heat pump when he was experimenting with his deep freezer. As a result, the heat pump was born. In EVs, the heat pump system was actually pioneered by Nissan, who applied it to the Nissan LEAF in 2012. Following closely behind were the BMW i3, Volkswagen e-Golf, Kia Soul EV first generation, and the Hyundai Ioniq Electric. The Model Y was the first Tesla vehicle to come equipped with a heat pump. Before that, all the other three cars, Model 3, S, and X, featured an electric resistance heating system. But after plonking them first into the Model Y, Tesla has started equipping heat pumps on all its cars. It can be said that heat pumps are not a common feature of modern pickup trucks. However, Musk always wants his car to dominate the market by unique factors. In a tweet, someone asked him if Cybertruck would get a heat pump like the Model Y, to which he responded, yeah, and a whole lot more. I'm dying to make a Cybertruck like yesterday. Now, how effective is Cybertruck's heat pump? A heat pump draws excess heat from the electric motor and the battery, both of which heat up with use, and then distributes that heat to your car's cabin warming it up faster and more efficiently on cold winter days. As we know, electric resistance heating systems are considered 100% efficient because of their equivalent output of heat compared to their energy. For comparison, the Cybertruck heat pump boosts the efficiency rating to 500%. 500%. So that's five times the effectiveness, right? With the addition of the heat pump, which allows for more efficient heating and cooling of the cabin. Uh, and requires 50% less energy for cabin heating in freezing conditions. If it takes 5 kilowatt hours to heat the cabin, it would take a resistive heater to pull 5 kilowatt hours of energy from the battery to heat the cabin. However, the Cybertruck heat pump uses just 1 kilowatt hour of battery to generate 5 kilowatt hours of heat for the cabin. For instance, a Cybertruck using a resistive heater would need 3600 watts to maintain the temperature. Five times less power was required by the Cybertruck with the heat pump system. It only needed 720 watts to do this. Moreover, the technique will reduce your supercharging time by only 1.5 minutes, according to the information provided. The refrigerant that Tesla uses has a boiling point of about negative 26 degrees Celsius, so it's safe to say that for most climates, even places that drop below freezing temperatures, the heat pump will work just fine even in temps cooler than negative 30 degrees because there are two loops that use compression and expansion of the refrigerant, going from liquid to gas to liquid, and those loops can pro produce heat, even in the extreme cold. While other systems lose out on 9% of their range, the Cybertruck's heat pumps only loses 1.5% of its range. So with such an amazing level of efficiency, how will the heat pump work on the Cybertruck? To put it simply, the heat pump pulls the air from outside the car, which heats the refrigerant and also warms the air. Then the warm air is pumped back into the cabin. The heat pump itself consists of a compressor, a condenser, an expansion valve, an evaporator, and a coil that runs through them all. Inside the coil is a refrigerant. First, the low pressure, low temperature gas refrigerant passes through the compressor, which then converts it into a higher pressure and temperature gas. The heated and pressurized gas then passes through a device called a condenser, 
where the gas is condensed into a liquid while retaining its high temperature and pressure. At this point, the heat pump pushes air across the condenser from outside the car, absorbing the heat energy and into the cabin. From there, the pressurized liquid refrigerant passes through an expansion valve, which uses mechanical principles to control the amounts of refrigerant liquid passing through, effectively slowing it down and reducing it back to a lower temperature and pressure liquid. The liquid refrigerant then passes through the evaporator. Here, the outside air is blown over the evaporator coils, which causes the liquid refrigerant to boil, even at cold outside temperatures, and turns it back into a low temperature, low pressure gas. Then the whole process starts over again with the compressor heating the refrigerant gas. However, not every system works as smoothly. Sometimes there are challenges. This is especially the case for vehicles built with a heat pump the electronic expansion valve may experience controller communication interruptions. The vehicle software does not close the valve and the accumulation of interruptions and subsequent realignments over extended periods where the vehicle is awake may result in an unintended valve opening event. This in turn may trap refrigerant inside the evaporator and may deplete the refrigerant from the active components in the system. The depletion may result in fail safe compressor stoppage and cause loss of cabin heating. The problem is apparently insignificant, as a Tesla software update to recalibrate a valve in the heat pump system should fix all the issues, which, in the end, isn't so worrisome. You'll see very little degradation in cold weather, um, and the radiator is uh, twice as big for heat rejection. As a general rule, the average lifespan of a heat pump is 10 to 15 years. A Tesla heat pump can last longer about 50 years or even more if you can take steps to ensure that your heat pump is well maintained. So you won't have to replace your heat pump system as often. This system will be used throughout until you no longer use the vehicle. Heat pumps are really the next big thing as they essentially take care of all of your HVAC needs while drawing barely any energy to heat the cabin. When Cybertruck eventually goes into production and uses the heat pump to maximize its range, Maybe then Tesla's big competitors will also take this route, so that the competition becomes more and more fiercer than ever. How do you feel about Cybertruck's new heat pump system? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode, and we sincerely thank you for watching and for all of your support of our channel. As always, if you enjoyed our video, please leave us a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell to stay up to date on exciting developments in the world of EVs and green technology. Once again, we thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next time. Until then, take care and be safe.